After the shooting in Florida last weekend, liberal NDP and Green MPs turned their attention to conservative MP Bob Zimmer. Zimmer sponsored a recent petition to take a gun called the AR-15 off the restricted list in Canada. The AR-15 is the kind of gun used in the Newtown and San Bernardino shootings. A similar weapon was used in the shootings in Orlando. Canadian gun control advocates worry that by loosening the restrictions on the AR-15, a particularly lethal weapon will become more available in Canada. The 180's Matthew Lazen Ryder spoke with people on both sides of the gun debate, and they say that this Canadian debate over the AR-15 has more to do with symbolism than with firepower. And Matthew joins me now. Hello. Hello, Jim. Start off by telling us about the goal of this petition. First of all, the petition closed in May with 25,000 signatures. And the only reason we're talking about it this week is that police in Orlando originally said the shooter there used an AR-15 type rifle. And that made a lot of reporters and politicians have another look at this petition that Zimmer presented. Now, the petition asked the government make the AR-15 a non-restricted gun. It's currently restricted in Canadian law. There are plenty of AR-15s in Canada, and they're legal, but because they're restricted, you have to register them with the police, and you can only take them to the firing range and back. So, uh, as the petition says... The restriction on the AR-15 and its variants prohibits the use of this semi-automatic modern sporting rifle for being used for lawful purposes such as hunting. Okay, well, what is an AR-15 and what makes it different from other hunting rifles? Well, the AR-15 was originally designed for the United States military, where it was called the M-16. Uh, It became the standard infantry rifle during the Vietnam War. It was later adapted for civilian use. And the biggest difference there is the civilian version does not allow for fully automatic fire. So automatic fire is you hold down the trigger and it just keeps firing until it runs out of bullets. The AR-15 civilian version is semi-automatic, meaning it automatically reloads itself every time you pull the trigger. You can just go bang, 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 bang until you have no bullets left. Uh, Unlike some uh, states in the U.S. where you can get magazines that hold up to 100 bullets, Canadians are restricted to a maximum five bullet clip. So you can go one, two, three, four, five, Uh, and fire all your bullets. Mm. So I wanted to meet someone who likes the AR-15, met Rod Giltaka. Rod is an instructor with the RCMP Canadian Firearms Program. He runs a firearms training company called Civil Advantage Firearms Training. He's got two AR-15s and invited me to take a look at one. I asked him to describe the gun and what makes people like it so much. So basically the AR-15 is a center fire, semi-automatic firearm. The gun itself is a very common rifle in Canada. You can get them in different barrel lengths and different colors, and but we've got a flashlight and an optic on it, and um, you know, and it's painted. Camouflage. Yeah, it's painted camouflage, yeah, very intimidating. <laughs> it's become an extremely popular rifle because it's easy to accessorize, to be honest with you. <laughs> That's probably the number one reason why people love this rifle. You can buy a lot of different upgrades and and things to make it look cooler or operate easier or whatever. And it's also very lightweight and, and quite reliable. Now, Rod mentioned uh, look cooler. The AR-15 looks like a military weapon, and they look like what you might think of when you hear the term assault rifle, though there is no hard and fast definition for what an assault rifle is. And why is it restricted, or is that an obvious question? Well, when I started researching the gun, I assumed it was restricted because it was semi-automatic or because of the length of its barrel or the kind of ammunition it fires. But that's not it. And I think a lot of people would be surprised at the number of non-restricted semi-automatic hunting rifles there are in Canada. Perfectly legal semi-auto hunting rifles that essentially do the same thing as the AR-15. And since the previous government scrapped the long gun registry, they don't need to be registered with police. So I asked the Justice Ministry for the specific reason, with technical details, why the AR-15 is restricted. And their response was, the semi-automatic version of the AR-15 is restricted because of its lineage to the military-issued M-16 assault rifle. And Rod and other gun owners' interpretation of that is, 
it's only restricted because of its association with a military weapon. You know, I, I talk very matter-of-factly with most people, and I say the reason why the AR-15 is restricted, while all these other firearms are not restricted, is because Arnold Schwarzenegger shot the Predator with it. Um, because Chuck Norris broke out the POWs in Delta Force 1 and 2, and he carried an AR-15. Uh, there's, again, there's no mechanical difference. So that's Rod's answer, and I spent some time cruising online Canadian gun message boards, and that seems to be the predominant feeling, that if you can have other rifles that are semi-automatic, be non-restricted, it only makes sense to be able to go hunting or shoot cans in the bush uh, with the AR-15. And that's not outlandish, though it may seem so, Jim. There are plenty of uh, people in the United States that go hunting with AR-15s. Um, In fact, in Canada, the term is black guns, guns that look kind of military-ish but are used for hunting. And there are little disputes among hunters about what's more honorable or skillful or efficient for for killing game. Mm -hmm. But presumably, the fact that the gun was designed for military purposes to kill human beings is a valid reason to restrict it. Yeah, and when I asked Rod that, his response was that the killings that led to the creation of the now-defunct Long Gun Registry, the Lacole Polytechnic shootings, were committed by a man using a non-restricted semi-automatic hunting rifle. One individual that had what we would consider to be like a ranch rifle, which is the Ruger Mini-14. Oddly enough, using the two two three or 5.56 NATO cartridge as the AR-15 and 30 other rifles that are still available today. Um, and that is a rifle that's designed to be used on a ranch to shoot coyotes or, or you know, medium-sized game, uh, control predators, that kind of thing. And unfortunately, humans aren't that much bigger than, than wolves or coyotes. You have a, a hunting rifle meant for life on the farm that's used to hurt people. I mean, it's, it's by virtue of the tool it is, it's inherently dangerous, just like many other dangerous things in our society. So Ron's central point, the AR-15 behaves like any other semi-automatic hunting rifle, can kill like any other semi-automatic hunting rifle, but looks like a military weapon. And in there he sees a kind of contradiction, that if we can't be logical and consistent about how we restrict guns, then there's a problem. Okay, so why not just argue then, we'll be consistent, we'll ban all semi-automatic rifles. Yeah, that's one conclusion you could come to. You know, you say, if you want to go hunting, you load your bullets one at a time with a bolt-action gun and make sure each bullet counts and so on. But I spoke with another person who thinks that even if we were to selectively restrict guns because of their aesthetics or their military associations, that's a reasonable thing to do. Ju Young Lee is a sociologist at the University of Toronto. He's American. He's familiar with that country's considerably more intense gun culture. And Ju Young says that the look of a gun is actually a big deal. So people, when, when they buy guns, they look for a number of different qualities in a gun. And one of them is the look of a gun. Another is the history of a gun. And then another is actually the symbolism of a gun, of what the gun actually symbolizes. So, for example, like the AK-47 has a long history of being a firearm that soldiers in different wars have used, and it's gained an international reputation for being cheap and very efficient. And so when people go out and buy the AK-47, they're not just buying a gun because of its uh, performance or its look, but they're also buying a gun because of the history that it invokes. And the same can actually be said about the AR-15. So the AK-47 that Ji Young mentioned is an interesting example, right? It's kind of a mythical gun, and it's it's got all these associations. It's the gun of our opponents in the Cold War. It's a gun that represents Soviet power. It represents rebellion and infiltration and peasant uprisings. And the M16, or the AR-15, is the counterpart to the AK-47. It was built literally, to take on the AK-47. And to Ju Young has collected a mythology all to itself. And what mythology is that? Masculinity. So to Ju Young, the look of the AR-15 is important because it fits into this idea of the tactical man, a guy that knows how to kick in doors and silently and deftly take on enemies and has gadgets for every occasion and can exert his manly will on people. There is a, an ad 
out there from Bushmaster, one of the companies that makes an AR-15. And it features the gun looking sleek and black, and the ad just says, consider your man card reissued. Mm. So Ju Young it, it reinforces the idea, you know, maybe not to people like Rod, but floating out there in society, that when a man is wronged, he can take back his manhood by picking up an army gun. These things have a function as being part of an, a larger identity toolkit, things that a person can use to construct a heroic, badass, masculine self. And unfortunately, it's part of the conversation that we often gloss over when we talk about the reasons or underlying reasons for why these kinds of mass shootings happen. Uh, one of the clearest examples that actually brought the issue of toxic masculinity to the fore was the mass shooting in Isla Vista, where the gunman released a manifesto on, a, on YouTube describing how he had gone through his whole life feeling uh, shunned by women and that he was embarrassed and ashamed that he was a virgin in university and that he was going to exact revenge on people who had ridiculed him or bullied him or marginalized him. I think that you know, we have to really examine a lot of different things that go into these mass shootings, guns being one of them, but I think masculinity and violence being so intricately linked to masculinity is also another part of the story. So two perspectives there, Jim. On one hand, it's illogical to treat something as serious as gun violence with something as superficial as looks or, as the ministry says, its lineage on the other, the vibe of a gun, the image it gives off, its connection to those movies, is where we need to start talking about gun violence. Matthew, thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. Matthew Lazenrider is a producer with The 180. Now, we should note that this petition will not succeed. The federal government has already said it has no intention of changing the restricted status of the AR-15. Now, of course, we'd like to hear from you. Is there a place for military-style weapons in Canadian society? Send us an email. Our address is the180 at cbc.ca.